Hello again, YouTubers. Reloading bench pack with you once again. Now we are on tripod. And we are down some tea. So let me move that over here. You can't see on my bench. In fact, let me see if I can move this up just a little bit. There you go. All right. So this will not stay on my bench. Or rather, let me rephrase that. It will not stay on my bench top in this location. It just happens to be there for the moment. Because today, we're going to be talking some more about the EP integrations annealer. And I know I talked about uh, the unboxing and the first look and why I went with them and why I didn't go with something like uh, an anneal E's or an anneal E, EZ, or however you pronounce it, or any other manufacturer. And that had to do uh, primarily with being able to do every single round of uh, bottleneck brass that I would have to do. So that was a win for me. So let me pick this up and move it to what I hope is center-ish of the bench now that I'm on tripod. Okay. So as I said, uh, I would buy a, uh, well, you can't buy a case or a cover, but uh, as I told you, uh, I would have a cover made, uh, which is what I did. And then I spent some time, which I haven't done in years, making room on my bench so that this particular uh, device, which you saw where it was sitting, um, I will move it out of the way, right there in that corner. And uh, that just, uh, for me, works out because um, I don't want to have this tucked away and primarily because of the potential damage to the drum. Um, so I had a very thick, double, double-layered uh, uh, black canvas case cover. Rather, I keep saying case. It's a cover made by my tailor friends who actually do all my covers. Uh, it's good to find a local tailor who's good at what they do. Uh, because, in fact, uh, what I'll do is I'll move this out of the way too. Supporting local business is a good thing, and uh, finding folks who have talent uh, is another good thing. Let me see if I can get this focused and in frame. All right, that looks like where we're going to be for our examples. And uh, I think I talked about it last week that uh, the pan that came with the... Uh, with the product, this one, or rather this one, I thought was a nice touch. But I wanted something a little smaller. So I looked around my bench, and as Murphy's Law would have it, I did have a smaller. I had a loaf pan, and I thought, oh, awesome, that's what I'm going to use. Unfortunately, the loaf pan is a little too high. It just hits the drum. In fact, you, see, you can see how the, moving the pan moves the drum. So that's a no-go. I mean, I could probably get away with leaving the pan to some degree, but uh, close to the machine to some degree. But I thought, man, let me... That's a no-go. Plan B. So plan B was, you know, check the local shops. And uh, I found this pan at the dollar store for $1.99. Think about that for a second. And that fits fine. And I was going to go with that. And then we were out shopping over the weekend and I found this basket. And I thought, oh, that's perfect because I can hold all my accessories and instructions in the basket and this basket would go under the bench great for airing out the brass because it breathes and it's just the right size so perfect size for even my biggest brass so 
that will work out quite nice. So tonight's activity is going to be to uh, use this and uh, use it in the sense of try it out for the first time live. And uh, I'm going to focus on two types of brass, uh, at least for me, and that's uh, 223 and my 416. So I'm using Braille right now to find my adapter. All right, so anywhere from zero, and uh, I did uh, polish this. I pulled this, pulled this out, and gave it a nice polish. Uh, I had somebody when I was doing some uh, work on uh, refurbishing and restoring some dies. Uh, his his comment was, "Oh, if you blew after you blew something, if you." Uh, use double out, uh, double or triple out, I can't remember what she said, steel wool on the bluing. It puts a beautiful finish on it, and I was thinking about doing that for here. Um, but I haven't taken that plunge yet. So we'll see how this ages when I burn it with the, with the torch. And another thing, when somebody said, uh, when I mentioned uh, that I was going to do a cover, they said, oh, you got to do red. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a big red fan. If you look at everything on my bench, there's no shortage of red. And I thought, well, because the unit is all black, let me just do black. So as the cover was being made, I noticed on, uh, I can't remember where it was on one of the uh, EP integration sites, whether that was like Facebook, uh, I think it was Facebook photos. And they showed uh, somebody who had painted their back uh, red and it looked really good and I'm like, oh shit. I should have done that um, But nope, I got black. I stuck with black. I'm gonna have black on the bench. So uh, between black and red I have no issues the instructions that uh, I Decided to laminate because I'm OCD um, Really not instructions other than what's included in the package and then don't be a dumbass. This is really hot so uh, that means I'll probably get burnt tonight because I will Probably do something that is dumbass-ish dumb ass or so. All right, so I have uh, a couple of trays of brass. And if you recall, I go all the way from, let me get this out of the way for a second, 416, 30 out 6, 300 Winchester, what do we got here? 762, 39, 308, 223, 300 blackout, and FN57. So th those are my brass size. In fact, that since since you're looking at this at an angle, let me. And again, I already. This is a repeat. So those of you who don't like repeat information, fast forward. So that's a repeat of um, the brass that I would run through this. And uh, just as an aside, I also took this off, cleaned it up a bit. And I'm guessing the cleanup was due to... So for, for, for 416, it would stay all the way back, obviously. So uh, for something smaller, like what I'll do tonight, two, two, three, obviously that needs to come forward. So uh, that first twist, it's kind of like breaking a little bit of a seal, but once you break that seal, uh, or crack the seal is probably a better word, there's no, nothing gets broken. Um, and then it's uh, very easy to maneuver. And because it's threaded, it's not going to move. So now you're just finding that right location. And I thought what I would do is, you know, after watching others anneal their brass, I would say that's probably good enough for 223. So obviously we're going to start with 223, but I can show you what I did. So I cleaned. This was had uh, black, and I'm guessing that was from the paint application. So I cleaned that off. I cleaned this off a little bit. Um, so that it was more uniform. It had some, uh, I would say, shipping shipping marring 
from probably this actually touching it, uh, no biggie. Uh, at some point, maybe I'll sandblast, bead blast. All right, so there's 223. Let's see how low I want to go. Uh, I don't want to go too low because uh, I want to make sure, and again, I'll fine tune this at some point. Tonight is just a try before you uh, do anything serious. So uh, I thought I would power it up, power it, power it up. Um, watching stuff online, six seconds seems to be what I would call uh, uh, the norm. For 223 uh, obviously depending on the flame and the how hot the torch is and all that good stuff so again with this particular brass guide I think it's officially referred to as the brass stop so now before I get busy with flame, I'll sit my big behind down. Oh, you heard that. A lot of weight on that chair, I'll tell you that right now. All right, so uh, I'm going to shoot for six seconds. Okay, so I missed that. Let me stop that. Bring the fence forward a little bit, because obviously if the fence doesn't match this we're going to have a problem so we'll call this learning one two three four five six okay so that's probably a little let's go with uh, 25 let's see what 25 gives us one mississippi two mississippi three mississippi four mississippi five mississippi six so 25 is too slow 30 was too fast, so let's do 27. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six. So I'm going to say 27 is just about right for 223. So what I will probably do. Uh, for those of you, again, who have watched my channel for any period of time, you know that for every load I, I work up, I have a, uh, a recipe book. So for the recipe book, uh, a couple years ago, my latest ad was the lab radar. So, you know, based on whatever load I'm doing, what is it chronograph at? And I started getting, uh, you know, started documenting that. Um, then we've got um, the annealer. So now what I'll probably do is add uh, annealing to, and I'm going to make sure this is closed. I will probably add annealing to my recipe book. All right, let's see if I can puncture this without, without blowing up. Dun, 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 dun. Move this around a little bit. All right, so my idea is... I'm going to probably come in at uh, at some kind of angle. And again, you're living this with me as I do this live. So those of you who are frustrated and irritated with how slow this is going, you can move on. All right, so I'm going to say that uh, that is where I should be able to lock this in. So what I'm doing now is adjusting where this particular clamp rests on my propane bottle. Um, and I'm going to say a, a, another big shout out to this design. Uh, I can't tell you how many things I've seen online about torch tips and units that have the torch tip mounted to the actual annealer and how many problems people have with burning plastics, those, you know, wheels. I'm not going to mention brand names, but the wheels, the interchangeable wheels, the 3D printed wheels, burning the wheels, breaking the, the clamp, having to buy special clamps. Um, again, the beauty of this is um, I, get to, I get to play with however high or low I want this because it's a totally separate device. It's got nothing to do... Uh, 
in terms of being anchored or bolted or adhered to uh, the particular annealer. So I thought that was cool. Uh, you know, another plus for the design because, um, you know, again, I can move this torch around in the flame farther, closer, back, whatever, um, where you can't do that with the ones that, you know, lock down and screw down and bolt down on the actual annealer. So um, this was another plus of this design for me. And wouldn't you know it, uh, let me see if this actually, okay, so we're working. Ah, the smell of butane in the evening. All right, uh, I'm going to put the camera on pause because I forgot to grab uh, a bit of a lighter. So uh, let me go do that right now. With my torch to light my torch. And we've got uh, just a handful of brass, uh, 223, 556. Again, I am not... Uh, I am not an expert at this, uh, and I'm sure there will be people uh, who watch this who say, dude, you don't have a clue of what you're doing. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, learning, and we all start at some phase of, uh, of our learning. That's some serious, serious pencil flame. All right, I don't know if you can see this, but my hand is right about here, and that's about where the flame is at, even though the, the, the torch pencil. Wow, look at that. Yeah, look at that. Okay, that's turning off. So I'm trying to figure out where I want this, uh, where I want the flame to be. Again, um, feeling my way around. So those of you who have any suggestions, feel free to, uh, to say what you will. So now it looks like what I can do is, what did I say we were going to go, 27? 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, uh, I think I said 27. Let me go back to... 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6. All right, so that's about where I want to be in terms of uh, flame. Uh, now I just need to figure out where I'm going to point my, uh, my flame. And if that is... 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5. Okay. Again, I'm learning, so uh, you don't need to be overly critical. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, and let me go a little bit faster because it looks like uh, I was seeing... 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5. I was seeing things kind of... So I'm going to save one. We're going to put that right there. And we're going to compare that with uh, what I've annealed. And again, I'm still adjusting, so I don't know how close I want the flame in or not. And it looks like, yeah, that was a little too high. Uh, maybe come in on the shoulder. And again, this is the beauty of this setup is I get to adjust that flame incredibly easy. Uh, there's no uh, effing around with the... Uh, so I'm going to save two. I lied. All 
All right, so I'm going to say 30-ish is my setting for uh, 223. And I have no idea how long these things stay um, hot. So I'm going to pick one up, and if I scream, you'll know that uh, it was too soon. So one of the things that uh, I did a little bit of research on was this Benzomatic torch is considered a pencil torch. You saw the flame. Uh, again, I might be too close, so this is my my learning. If you have comments, all you expert annealers, let me know. Because when uh, when I look online, uh, everybody's saying, you know, that's, you want to get, you know, that's your sweet spot, roughly between my two fingernails there. And what I see is a lot of annealing further down the case, further down the neck. So... Uh, and here's a great example. Let's see how hot this... Wow, that's still kind of hot. Yeah, that's still kind of hot. Let's grab some tweezers. All right. So, this is exactly what I'm referencing. Uh, see how far down the neck that came? Or rather, how far down the case from the neck that came? Uh, an unannealed versus an annealed case. And again... Still learning, but ideally I'd like to get the flame like no lower than that. And uh, obviously it's going to get higher on the case head, uh, case mouth rather. But that's kind of where I'd like to be. And this is why I did this on, uh, you know, test bed brass. So I will look at some of these. In fact, uh, here, let's, we can, it's too bad I didn't number them. Uh, had I been thinking better. All right, so here's here's a couple of good examples. I will show this to you in a second once I finish burning my hand. All right, so uh, here is the non-annealed brass. And as you can see, I get a little pointer. This goes, you know, easily, you know, half an inch down. This one's similar, that one's similar, this one's similar. This one I would call my best so let's leave these two. <coughs> Excuse me. My tea must be getting to me. Let's say that uh, this is what I would strive for uh, in terms of where the annealing took place. Uh, this a little bit too low in my opinion. Not, I guess not bad. Maybe somebody else, uh, an expert in the, in the area will tell me. Um, so this is what I would probably shoot for as opposed to this when I'm, uh, when I'm doing my brass. So let's set up for 416 while these continue to cool all right 416 is a uh, is a big boy that's going to go all the way back and i'm trying to stay away from the brass stop so that i don't get burned you can see how nice and blued that is so me thinks that maybe I will repolish that and blue it, but then maybe I won't because that's where I know where the heat stain is and uh, nobody wants to get burned. So <clears throat> All right, so I think that's pretty cool that I just went from a relatively short piece of brass, you know, when you compare 223 to 416 Barrett in a very short period of time to be able to uh, rotate that over. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull this out just a little bit. <coughs> mm. The T must be going down the wrong way. All right, so I would call that locked in. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I think that's kind of comparable. So that won't fit. Let me let me dump this brass, which is probably now cool enough. And I have no idea how long to anneal. In fact, I even looked it up online and I didn't see anything. When you consider the thickness of the mouth of that compared to two two three, so two two three was you know five uh, five to six seconds. I'm thinking uh, 416 Barrett is going to be like 10 to 15 seconds. So 
Let's see what we get in terms of roll. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand, eleven, one thousand. 11, 1,000. I'm going to say 11 to 12 seconds. So we're going to leave that setting there because, again, we're just uh, experimenting. Let me start this again. Trying to get that flame as small as possible, uh, my pencil flame, and methinks, now that I have my flame going, uh, let's see what I'm looking at in terms of uh, location. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. That gets right up on the the shoulder and let me do the neck so I was all over the place there and I didn't like that all right so that was so pinpointed that I think what I can do is go with a much larger that isn't all that hot hot enough but not uh, not like burn my finger hot all right, so now we're going to try, and again, 416, might have to do a little more research on this bad boy to see where I'm going to uh, position this, as well as what the flame needs to look like. So, I'm going to call this, I would say I'm in the zone. What's funny is you can see, and the reason I'm going to turn this off is because I'm going to compare it, once it cools off, to the non-annealed version and see what we've got. So at a 10 second annealing, and I've actually double annealed this, so um, that's probably a little bit... Um, so you can see, I can see the difference, this is the non-annealed one, I can see the difference in the brass coloring of, it looks like when I hold it in uh, the, the way the light is hitting it, I've got from here down to uh, the shoulder. So um, ideally I'd probably like it a little further down. So again, I think I'm going to play with the, uh, with the flame setting. But again, to me, that's the power of this little unit is the adjustability of this torch not being mounted on the annealer so that I can move this anywhere, I can raise it, I can lower it, I can do whatever I need to do um, and uh, quickly get it out of the way or, or, or put it in, or whatever. Um, but again, for my needs and how this machine runs and the, uh, the volume that I will be um, doing in my uh, annealing, uh, again, I'm not a high volume bottleneck shooter. This is uh, this is right on the money in in so many ways. So uh, yeah, you know how I feel about it. Thumbs up. That's all for now, guys. Okay, folks. As I was putting things away, I had an epiphany, and I thought, why not measure the brass? So. If I'm saying roughly five to six seconds, more like six seconds, is normal-ish for 223, this particular brass, which is Winchester, I'm going to say it's coming in at 13-ish one-hundredths of an inch. Okay, so if six seconds is good for 13 one-hundredths of an inch, then for 416, we've got roughly almost 25, so I'm going to say double. I'm just going to say double. So if we're saying six seconds, five to six seconds for 223, then maybe my guesstimate of 10 to seconds. So 10 to 12, five to six for 223, 10 to 12 for uh, 416 Barrett. Unless uh, somebody out there knows better 
and uh, my caliper method is uh, not scientific enough, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. Thank you much. Later.